Hello and thank you for joining me. I am your host, Amy Donaldson, host of the Get Off the Cash Flow Roller Coaster podcast, published author, certified sales performance and leadership coach. And this is where we come to get tools, tips, and tricks for relationship based selling and servant selling. And I'm really excited about something that I was thinking about earlier today. And I think why I'm so passionate about personal development is if you're in relationship-based sales and you are not investing in your personal development, you're leaving money on the table. And some people, it's a lot of money. And you're leaving relationships behind. And if you really think about it, if you don't invest in yourself, you're not serving as many people as you could. You're not overcoming the obstacles that you need to overcome to get in front of enough people. So if you're not working on your own personal development, you're actually letting people down. And if you think about it, you owe it not just to yourself and your family and anybody who's relying on you for that income. So whatever nonprofit you donate to or whatever it is that you do, you owe it not just to that group, but to the people who you could be serving, the people who need and want the valuable service that you offer, the people who need and want the level of care that you deliver. So we've all heard this concept, eat the frog, which basically is like do the hard thing first. Whatever's the one thing that you're dreading, do that first. And I actually recently came up with a phrase with one of my clients who was getting too much into her actual business and not enough into like her outreach. And so we called it dials before files. So doing the hard thing, right? Sometimes it's hard to make those connections. It's hard to reach out to people. So do the hard thing first. Do the scary thing first. I believe there's even a book titled Eat the Frog. So why? Why is it so important to do the hard thing first? The reason is because action cures fear. So the minute that you start acting, it builds momentum. And this is something that is talked about in, um, there's a great book by Stephen Pressfield called The Art of War. Now it's not, it's, er, er, no, 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 no. I literally just got it backwards. It's called The War of Art. So it's not The Art of War, which is a book, uh, like a classic book that people are familiar with. It's the other way around, The War of Art. And it's by Stephen Pressfield. And it's amazing. And it's a tool to help people in relationship-based sales. So what he talks about, he says, every writer knows, and I can attest to this, it's not the writing that's hard. It's the sitting down to write. And not just once, but building a habit around it. That's the hard thing. And anybody who's ever um, you know, set a goal to get into better shape, you know, it's not the working out that hard, that's hard. It's the getting to the gym. That's step one, whatever journey you're on, whatever it is that you're, and again, in relationship-based sales, the hardest thing, the heaviest thing is this right here, our phone. The hardest thing is picking up the phone and making a phone call. And I'm not talking about cold calls. I, people tell me that all the time, like, I don't want a cold call. No, I'm talking about building your relationships. I'm talking about the person, the client who did business with you a while ago and you haven't kept in touch with, and you need to reach out and say, Hey, it's been a while. That's a really hard phone call to make. That's a step one activity that leads to other things that are just easier and easier. Once you do the first thing, other things just naturally flow and it becomes like a snowball rolling down the hill. So it's really, really important to do the hard thing first. I, and just like with me, I experience this all the time. So something to think about is what sorts of things are you setting up so that the hard thing becomes easier or is almost like a forced 
activity, like what are you putting in place so that you're going to do the hard thing? So with the gym, for example, a trick that a lot of people have is a gym buddy. When I used to run with a bunch of women at 5.30 in the morning, I would show up because I knew they were there waiting for me. If they got up that early, and we're, and this was in Portland, Oregon, where it was cold and raining and dark half the year. They're there with their headlamps and their reflective gear. I'm not gonna sleep in. So yeah, the alarm would go off. I didn't wanna get out of bed either, but because people were waiting for me. So that was something that I had put in place so that the hard thing happened. Because once I got out of bed, And once I drove to wherever we were going to run, the running part became easy. Or I had the other group of friends. Some of them actually were the same women that we'd meet actually at the actual gym and take a class 530 in the morning. It's dark and cold. So what are you putting in place? And it's not always an accountability buddy, right? What are you putting in place? Is it putting a rule? I'm going to do my dials before files. So I'm not allowed to touch any of this business until I've made at least X number of phone calls to brand new people that actually want to hear from me. So what are you doing to build your relationships? What are you doing to force yourself to do the hard things? And what are you doing to invest in yourself and in your own personal development? A lot of, we can invest in our mind, in our food, in our health, in our relationships, in our spirituality. So in any area of your life, and you don't have to invest in all these areas all at once, but if your clients are important to you, and if your family's important to you, and if your own self is important to you, invest in your own personal development. I don't think I've ever heard anyone look back and say, you know, I wish I had just invested a little bit less in myself or a little bit less in my relationships or a little bit less in my own personal development. I don't, I don't hear a lot of regret in these areas, but my goodness, we've all heard people who regret not making those investments. So thank you for taking the time and spending this time with me. If this podcast spoke to you, I want you to just take a moment, go through the contacts in your phone and think about who else would this be meaningful to and go to the contacts and just kind of scroll up and text a link of this podcast to one person. I challenge you to share it with at least one person and please subscribe so you get notified when I put others out. Now go out and win the day.